Hello, welcome to the Legendary Roundup. Today we'll be taking a look at 2013's Gravity. It is the Diamond Lux Edition, which is the only version that I know of that has the Dolby Atmos track. As always, spoilers ahead, let's jump into scene one. All right, so the first scene, it's the very beginning of the movie, and we start off with this like crescendo of music and sound. And uh, it's kind of reminds me of Blade Runner 2049 when they have that you know crazy crescendo. It's not as crazy as Blade Runner 2049, but uh, this one is really cool because it just comes in and then it goes silent. It's not terribly loud, but it's a really cool effect. I think it kind of transitions nicely to the very first scene that we see. Right off the bat, you know this is going to be a great Atmos mix. You hear voices coming from the uh, right surround, and that uh, voice kind of goes all the way around uh, to the surround back, all right, and then to the surround back left, then to the side surround on the left, and then it comes all the way full circle and into the right. So right away, you're in. You know you're in for a treat. So right here, her voice comes in from the back left and it goes to the side. And then now she's front and center, which is pretty cool. So right there, the other astronaut's voice is clearly coming from behind. There's also a uh, 20 hertz hum that's kind of consistent throughout this scene. And uh, things are about to get bad. Houston is starting to travel around the room as the camera spins around. That's really cool. So right here, when she's spinning all around, uh, Clooney's voice is kind of spinning around with her. And uh, yeah, so he's going from like back here to up there to the side. And uh, his cutting in and out, the music swelling all around you. It's a nice fitting finish to a great scene. So this scene, a five out of five. The voice is tracked with pinpoint accuracy. Okay, scene two starts um, after she's kind of like floating off into space. Uh, Kowalski comes from behind and uh, he starts off as a slight little crackle. You can hear him right here. And then he starts to track from this back left to the left. And then now he's starting to move again from the left speaker to the front. Now he's on the left speaker. And you start to see him on the screen, on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And uh, he's coming in. So it's perfect pinpoint uh, accuracy with the voice tracking. Right, so a little further into the scene, we hear uh, Clooney's voice in the helmet. And it sounds like it's a very thin sound coming from all over above. Kind of like as if your head is in a helmet. All right, so in uh, this part, uh, they're trying to grab uh, the other astronaut. And when she kind of finally catches up to him, uh, she turns him and kind of gets a glimpse at his face. And this is what I call a face reveal. And uh, there's a huge spike at around 10 hertz here. Ooh, right there. And it gives me this like really uneasy feeling and I think that's a really cool sound effect because that scene visually is very unsettling and adding that 10 hertz um, effect really adds to it. Okay just a little bit later into the scene they reach the space shuttle and um, it's really crazy how well they track the breathing of the astronauts here as the camera pans around. All right so after that little jump scare here's where the breathing starts. So it starts off to the right she's there and as the camera pans, the breathing moves behind you. And she's all the way over here now. And then all the way back to the front. So that's a really cool scene if you want to capture some uh, breathing tracking <laughs> all around you. Okay, at this point in the uh, scene, we hear Kowalski, who's over here, somewhere back here uh, in the frame. And he's coming from back there. So here he takes a look at his mirror and uh, she's behind him and it sounds like she's coming from 
behind, which is really cool. Okay, so that scene gets a four. It's got some really great voice tracking again because everything is nice and quiet. You can really pinpoint uh, where things are coming from. Scene three starts at the, uh, after the infamous tether scene where, you know, she kind of lets go or rather he lets go of her. We won't go into details about that. But um, here there's, there's uh, quite a bit more of this uh, voice tracking. Um, when, she, when he's talking to her, uh, we know exactly where he is uh, based off of the sound. And every time she kind of like uh, moves on to a new piece of uh, equipment or like bar or, or surface, um, there's a nice little low end uh, thud to it. It's almost like uh, it's vibrating off of his suit. So right there when they turned, his voice went from one part of the room. He's now to the back uh, of the room, which is where he's at in, in space. All right, so now we get to a sequence called what I call the helmet cam. And whoa, it just all of a sudden hits you this huge 25 hertz, like uh, consistent hum thump. And um, it is, in, it's intense. It's, it's, it's probably the highlight of the scene um, as she's trying to make her way into the airlock. And uh, this is a really cool feeling of like, dread as she's trying to uh, get inside. This scene gets a five. Uh, it's a combination of the really precise tracking as well as this like crazy 25 hertz note uh, that goes as soon as she kind of goes into her helmet cam. Excellent. So this next part we call the fire. And right here we have bells going off all above you. So right here we have like this whole left and even rear uh, on fire. And uh, it's got some nice little bass. Ooh, that's a nice little thud right there. Okay, the ringing in your ears all around you. Fire has some nice uh, low end to it. Even though this, ooh, that thing right there is in front of you, it tracks very nicely kind of around. Nice little explosion there as well. The fire washes above you right there. Now the fire is all around. You hear metal groaning from above you. Okay. More fire, more sound effects just coming from above you. Nice little rumble, soft rumble. Everything kind of goes quiet for a split second. And then right there. That explosion, metal groaning and creaking all around, all above you. It's cool. Definitely got to check that part out. Okay, right there. Another big rumble from above. Okay, the scene ends with some nice sound effects as she does a little roll. Right there. Woo, that's a nice little fun roll. A lot of metal groaning and creaking. All right, so this scene, I give it a four. Uh, it's got a lot, a lot of overhead effects, a couple of nice low-end explosions, nothing crazy, so four. Okay, so this is the final scene, and uh, I want to start it off with this part where she does a dry separation, and it gives a nice little low-end thud to kind of kick things off. That sounds pretty good. All right, so here, uh, for the next 10 minutes or so, it gets uh, pretty crazy. And I'll just talk about the most intense parts. Uh, the first being, uh, it starts off with the uh, door ejection, I guess. And she kind of flies out. The alarms are going off all around you. Okay, so these um, fire extinguisher bursts reminds me a lot of War of the Worlds, the heat rays that the tripods do. Uh, it's kind of near that 30 hertz range. It's not as intense, but it gives me that same or very similar impact. And so I kind of like this uh, uh, fire extinguisher part. Here, when she gets closer to the actual space station, um, every time she hits any part of the station, there's a nice low end thud. She grabs on like that. When she like flings herself to the next part of it, Next key moment is when she enters the Chinese station. 
and she takes off her helmet and immediately you hear all sorts of like uh, alarms up above you hear announcements coming from up above as well and there's banging everywhere uh, from the objects outside colliding with the st uh, station it's a cool little whoosh sound right here as the gas uh, is all around you in this particular scene there right there is a really great groaning metal groaning from the left side upper all the way to the right side okay right there super intense like metal fluttering above her uh associated with you know, a large bang and this happens several times throughout the next like minute or so that was really cool the score here really gives me chills and if it doesn't for you i don't know man it, this whole last sequence is amazing in terms of the, the the music all right the next really cool part in the scene is when the shoot deploys it feels like the parachute is going through the entire room from there front all the way back up it's really cool all right so this next part uh as the pot is sinking down into the ocean uh you, ooh, these bubbles right there just kind of washes over you finally uh all the way to the last moments of the film we have another really nice atmos sounding scene uh if you've ever seen the amaze trailer where you have these like insects kind of buzzing all around you uh this is that scene where you have a lot of intense insects just kind of flying above you. You can hear it all around and it just reminds me of that trailer but maybe even a little bit more intense. Not only the sides but you hear them from above you as well. Really really loud buzzing kind of flying around. So this scene gets a five. This is probably the number one scene I'm going to go to showcase uh, in the near future when anybody comes over. Okay, after averaging the scores, we get 4.6 legendary brown notes out of five. Holy moly, what an experience. This takes the top spot on the leaderboard and with good reason. Youthman and Technodad have both done videos of this edition of Gravity and I agree with their sentiments 100%. You should check out their videos. This is gonna be the first disc I reach for when someone comes over and asks for a demo. If they want an Atmos demo, the opening scene can't be beat. If they want to see what my entire system can do, then the last scene is amazing. Remember, I only have up-firing speakers, so if this sounds this good in my room, it will sound even more amazing if you have the proper ammo setup. Big thanks to YouTube member Srikanth for suggesting this movie to review. Other sound mixers need to learn a thing or two from this mix on how to place objects. This edition came out five years ago, and we're still getting subpar Atmos mixes. After doing a bit of digging around, it seems like this Diamond Lux version is currently out of print, Looking on eBay, there's a couple of people selling copies for over $150. If you don't currently own this, I wish you the best of luck trying to get your hands on a copy. And if you do, you will not be disappointed, especially if you have the system capable of playing it back. I'm really surprised they have not released a 4K version of this disc with Atmos. It would give more people the chance to experience this amazing track. So one of the things I noticed with the BQ version is uh, this scene right here. Uh, in the regular Atmos version, there is uh, no 10 hertz spike when we uh, see Sharif's face for the reveal. And I think it really did make a big difference when I was listening to it with BQ because it gives you this sense of uneasiness, those vibrations that you get at 10 hertz. Um, and it's very, very clear that it's there in the BQ version and not there in the uh, just regular Atmos version. The, the next scene I want to talk about in terms of BQ is the fire. And I feel like the fire just has more uh, a full range effect when listening with BQ. And you can see right here, it extends lower and louder. So this whole scene just feels a little bit more tactile when I have the BQ track on. And it's a really cool sequence as well.
All right, so for this area of the BEQ, I feel like every time she grabs onto another handle or another surface, the low end just seems to hit a little bit harder um, as she's climbing her way into the airlock. All right, so another section where BEQ seems to really make a difference is right here at the end where everything breaks apart. Uh, you feel a little bit more low end. And then especially when they go back into the capsule, um, especially the fire, it seems to have more depth uh, and it digs a little bit lower than, um, so like right there, it just, you just feel a little bit more intense vibrations. Even as these things are hurtling through the sky, uh, it just has more presence. Like right here, uh, it just feels more intense. My friends and I love the term space porn. This movie has tons of it. There are so many awesome views of the Earth, and it is one of my favorite movies to just get lost in the visuals. The movie has a few scientific inaccuracies, but if you overlook those, I think this is a really enjoyable film. The score by Stephen Price is amazing. This is especially true during the last scene where the music swells, is tension-filled, yet somehow feels hopeful. Sandra Bullock has been a favorite of mine ever since I saw Speed like an eon ago. She knocks it out of the park in this one. I love the roller coaster of emotions I took with her during this movie. Alrighty, another review down. Do you agree that this is one of the best Atmos mixes out there? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Come back next week for another review, and thanks again for watching.